At that time, Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a Canaanite woman of that district came and called out, Have pity on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. Jesus said, Jesus did not say a word in answer to her. Jesus' disciples came and asked him, Send her away, for she keeps calling out after us. He said in reply, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But the woman came and did homage, Jesus' homage, saying, Lord, help me. He said in reply, It is not right to take the food of the children and throw it to the dogs. She said, Please, Lord, for even the dogs eat the scraps that fall from the table of their masters. Then Jesus said to her in reply, O woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And the woman's daughter was healed from that hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. My brothers and sisters, good morning. There was this six-year-old child who visited her friend for supper. When everybody was already at table, she bowed her head and waited for a prayer. But uh, everybody at table started eating without praying. So the child smiled and said, Oh, <laughs> I see you are just like my dog. Uh, you dig right in, meaning to say you partake of the blessings of God without even remembering Him. Because there is this principle, every time we drink water, let us always remember the fountain. So that's one image of prayer, meaning out of gratitude we remember God, not only during in, in times of need. But uh, a prayer, asking God for something, is also valid because indeed God is the source of all blessings. There are things in life that we need which we can only get from God. And somehow this is shown by the Canaanite woman because, you know, Canaanites, they are the traditional enemies of the Jews. So this woman actually did something extraordinary. First, she approached Jesus. That's unthinkable at that time for a Canaanite woman approaching the Jews. And she did not only approach Jesus, she asked for something or she begged the Lord to help her. She even kneeled down before the Lord. That's really uh, luar biasa, extraordinary for this woman to get out of her way just to ask for blessing, for healing, because her daughter was sick. Now, our Lord Jesus Christ, uh, this is another lesson that we can learn that, of course, it's okay to ask from God. And uh, sometimes instead of relying from something else, we rely on God. But, you know, God does not always react according to expectation. Sometimes we even have this perception that he is not listening because he is not responding at all. And this is what happened here. Why? This is just to test the woman because uh, the Jews expected that God would only serve them. Now for our Lord Jesus Christ to cross the divide, to serve also the Gentiles, those who are outside of the faith, there must be a manifestation of strong faith. That's why she tested the, the woman uh, by silent treatment. That's the first one, as if she did, he did not hear anything. Then when she insisted, which is a sign of her desperation, she test, uh, our Lord Jesus Christ tested the woman by giving the answer, the children uh, does not deserve, uh, uh, food for the children is not given to the dogs. 
Now, if we don't understand the word here, it is like our Lord Jesus Christ insulted, insulted the woman. But you know, this woman is a Greek woman. That's why uh, she is quite sharp and uh, intelligent. Our Lord Jesus Christ actually at that time was using the word dog that refers to a pet dog. Meaning quite lovingly, affectionately, the Lord must be smiling at that time. You know, it's not good uh, to uh, give to the pet dog yeah, the food for children. Now, the woman must have smiled in reply also. But you know, Lord, when the parents are not looking, little boys will also give food to the pet. Uh, naughtily. <laughs> Because perhaps the boys did not like the cooking of the mother. <laughs> yeah, and give it to the dogs. No. Sometimes that happens. Meaning, the, the test of the Lord is not really to insult the woman, but just to test whether she is persistent enough. So when our Lord Jesus Christ does not automatically reply to our prayers, there are two possibilities. One of which is not because he does not listen, or he does not want to attend to our needs, but because first is he would like to test, do we really know what we ask for? And are we really asking for it? Uh, that's why uh, it's a test of persistence, because sometimes you are just asking as if there's no other option, so, oh yeah, let's ask the Lord. Now let us really test, uh, look into our intentions. Do we really see God as the source of all blessings? Or we search for something else, then when nothing more uh, happens, then we, it's as if the Lord is the last recourse. When in fact, the Lord should always be our recourse from start to finish. Hmm. The Lord is not like a mechanic. We use the car, use it uh, exhaust extensively, then when the car is already uh, ruined or there's already defect, then we call for the mechanic. Yeah. Okay, we live our life on our own. Then when there are already troubles, we call on the Lord. When in fact, the Lord should always be there. And that's the persistence. Oh, this is what we are uh, told today. Be persistent in our prayers. God must be testing us whether we really know and believe that He is the source of all blessings and He can do things for us. Uh, that's why, uh, you know, there is this legend when Moses divided the Red Sea, it was not uh, the water divided, not when Moses raised the uh, cane. Mm. But rather, it started dividing when a couple started to cross the, the river or cross Red Sea, even if it has not divided yet. Because Moses said, uh, the Lord will save us. We will cross this Red Sea, or oh, this sea of water. So he raised his uh, cane or stump. But the water did not divide. When did it start dividing? When a couple started to brave themselves of crossing the water. Then the water started. Meaning to say, when we pray, there is this sense of aggressiveness. When we encounter a little bit of rejection, a little bit of delay, then we complain. Yeah, just like this woman, uh, it's a classic story. She prayed because there was this flood surrounding her house. And she prayed to God, and she really relied on God for everything. Then a boat came. I come to save you. Oh, don't worry, don't worry. God will save me. So the following day, the water rises to the second floor. So all water around. Another boat came. I come to save you. No, no, no. It's okay. Lah. God will save me. Then the following day, the woman was already on the roof. 
Then a helicopter came, and the man on that helicopter said, I come to save you. No, no, it's okay. God will save me. After a few hours, the water rise up, and the woman drowned. So he went to heaven, but before he entered he heaven, he told, uh, as he told uh, St. Peter, I would like to lodge a complaint. <laughs> because I prayed to God and relied on Him for everything, but He did not answer my prayer. He did not save me. I drowned in that flood. Then St. Peter said, You know, what else do you want from God? He already sent you two boats and one helicopter. But you see, our concept of prayer is that, yeah, God will be doing everything. The principle is, we pray as if everything depends on God. But we act as if everything depends on us. That's a perfect attitude for prayer. Let us not give everything to God as if God, we will just sit down and God will do something for us. Just like this woman. If what she did was simply to look at Jesus from afar, no, she approached the Lord. She begged the Lord. And when she was rejected somehow, she wrestled her way until finally the Lord said, O woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. This is what will happen to us every time we pray as if everything depends on God and start acting as if everything depends on us. Amen.